Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I hope you guys are all doing fine. Today is a Q&A video so I asked you on YouTube and Instagram um, to send in your questions you have for me and you guys have sent pretty much a lot of questions so in this video I will be answering your questions about me. So the first question that's asked is am I in a relationship and my answer is no, I am single and I don't think I am gonna be in a relationship until about, let's just say, maybe after college, but who knows. The next question that is asked is early bird or night owl? So I'm definitely a night owl. I pretty much am like motivated to do work or especially productive doing work at night starting at around 9 p.m. until like 12 or 1 a.m. and that's also kind of like my sleeping cycle so I can just say I'm a night owl and I'm definitely not an early bird. My next question is um, how do I stay motivated and pretty much the first thing to stay motivated is I need to find like a source of motivation so usually it's watching study with me or having a live study with me on background while I'm studying because it feels like I have a study buddy beside me and sometimes like um, I would get like my iPad or my mom's phone and like do time lapses um, because for some reason every time I'm doing like a study time lapse I'm more inclined to work because like I have a feeling someone is watching me and like if I do not do my work then um, then I pretty much will feel guilty so that's one way of guilt tripping myself um, then I also usually start with the easy tasks so like I can get into the study zone so yeah these are my tips for you and of course these work for me but um, it depends if it works on you but you can always try it so the next question is my favorite books so I have a lot of favorite books Harry Potter, Hunger Games, um, I have a lot but my current favorite book I like is Beware That Girl which is from the books that I bought during the Big Bad Wolf sale. It is in one of my recent videos so you can check it out. The next question is what is your favorite part of having a study gram or YouTube? So my favorite part of having a study gram or a study YouTube channel is basically connecting and making friends with one another. Um, the study community, whether in YouTube or Instagram, is a like very supportive community and they're very friendly. Like when you introduce yourself, suddenly there will be like a lot of people who like want to be your friends or want to help you and they want to welcome you to your to the study community so when I first entered maybe like one or two years ago there were lots of people who welcomed me and I was always able to ask them questions about the community and it's just really a very supportive and healthy community and another reason why I enjoy having a study club or study YouTube is I get to share my tips and I get to share my journey with other people so I can sh help people if they have problems in studying a certain subject or they need some productivity tips and I also like get to show people my journey of how I grow as a person and to show like what a student a Filipino student is like the next question is what job do you want to take up when you grow up so I want to be either a computer programmer or a software developer. So in college, I am thinking of majoring in computer science or information systems. So the next question is, why did you choose FlipD over Forest? So I've been using FlipD heavily when it comes to studying and I only use Forest when I'm like doing creative work like if I'm doing YouTube, Instagram, um, blogging or coding and um, the reason why I like Flip is because of the college music. Um, for some reason whenever I, 
whenever I'm studying, I always like to put on the college music live stream on the Flipty app. And Flipty also has lots of ambient music you can listen to. And also, since I am, I have a premium membership of Flipty, um, I get more access to to stuff that to features that Forest may not have, and I really like to utilize those features when I study. So the next question is, what is my favorite highlighter? And I have two favorite highlighters. The first one is the Sharpie highlighter that comes in six colors, mainly yellow, orange, pink, purple, blue, and green. And what I like about the Sharpie highlighters is that they last for a long time. Now, I heavily use highlighters when highlighting on textbooks and um, making it as headers and headers and titles for my notes so the highlighter the ha sharpie highlighters i have now lasted for almost three years already and it doesn't seem like the ink is fading which is really weird since the longest um my highlighter ever lasted was at least one and a half years and that was a stabilo highlighter um i also like sharpie highlighters because they don't ghost over the pages or if they do it's very minimal and it's not easily seen so um i have trouble when there's ghosting of highlighters when i go to the next pages because if i use a lighter ink it might not be seen if there's a ghosting of a highlighter or like when i take um like instagram photos um the ghosting can also be seen no matter how much editing i do and um i think sharpie is really a practical highlighter and it's also very cheap now the downside of the sharpie highlighter is that they don't have that much colors and this is where my second favorite highlighter comes in i love the the zebra mouth liners because they have a large array of colors that I like to color match. So I love matching the colors with the matching the zebra mouth liners to my hands. And my problem with the mouth liners um, is that it goes on my papers. Um, if I really have like thin papers or a, like a cheap brand of papers, it goes heavily to the point where it's like a permanent marker posting on a normal paper. So I have to like buy um, a specific kind of brand like the Cochlea papers just so the ghosting wouldn't happen. So yeah, that's just my problem with the mild liners. And um, another problem with the mild liners is that they get frayed easily like the tips. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, but after using it heavily, the tips will just fray out, which is also a big problem to me. But nonetheless, Sharpie and um, Zebra Mouth Liners are my favorite highlighters. So the next question is, when did I start loving books? So it was around age 13 that I fell in love with reading books. So as a kid before, I never liked reading books because it was laid to me like as a chore like my mom said that I cannot play if I didn't read a book or didn't finish a certain number of pages and in school we were also forced to read books so naturally um, I wouldn't be interested in reading because it seemed like a chore to me but one day when I was 13 in my cousin's house um, I saw a Harry Potter book and um, out of curiosity, I started just looking, like reading through the pages to see what was so nice about it since people were obsessed with it. So I naturally fell in love with, um, reading, with reading after finishing the first book of Harry Potter and I was able to finish all seven books in two weeks and take note, these two weeks were like around midterms. We had midterms so I did not study properly for my midterms because I was obsessed with reading Harry Potter and thankfully my grades didn't suffer but I didn't have enough sleep because I would waste, I would sacrifice my sleeping time for reading those books. 
So Harry Potter was the first book that made me fall in love with reading and um, I didn't find it now as a chore. Rather, it's a hobby that I enjoy reading and I wish I could read more not just in the summer but you know, studies take so much time and once you start reading a book, you can't put it down. So yeah, I have to thank um, Harry Potter for opening my love to reading and for unleashing my inner bookworm. So the next question is, what is my ethnicity? So I am a Chinese. So um, I might live in the Philippines, but I am pure Chinese, and this is mainly because my ancestors migrated from China to the Philippines during the Chinese War in order to escape the war and to also have a better future for their kids and for the future generation. So the next question is, what is an activity you like to do on rainy days? So one activity I like to do on rainy days is mainly to cuddle up on bed in the bed and um, have like a cup of tea and read my favorite book or if I'm not feeling in the mood to read the book which is rare um, I would like to do some rainbow loom and if you don't know that it was like a high board it's like crocheting rub rubber bands um, I have yet to buy yarn because I want to try knit knitting is that how you call it yeah like knitting or crocheting because it's one thing um, that helps me de-stress and um, yeah so that's what I like to do the next question is what inspires me the most so the my grandparents are the people who inspire me the most to keep pursuing my dreams even if it seems hard to accomplish because they have made a lot of sacrifices to make sure that their children and grandchildren never had to go through the hardships they face. During my grandparents' time, money was very tight and they had to work and study at the same time in order to have enough money to afford the basic necessities. For them in that time, it may seem like they will always stay like that but they never gave up on their dreams for a better future. I am grateful for my grandparents because now I get to focus on my studies and not worry about my basic necessities nor do I have to work while studying. Because of them, I also take my studies really seriously because I want to repay my grandparents for the hard work they did in order to give their future children a better life. The next question is what do you do to concentrate for long hours? So let me just have a disclaimer here. Um, my long hours is normally two to three hours. My average study. I normally do really long hours, six to eight, um, which is reserved for midterms and finals only. Um, so how I was able to concentrate for so long is because I had a goal in mind, and that is to be able to do well in my midterms and finals. The reason why I can slack off in studying for quizzes is because um, they only have a short amount of lessons so it's like I can cram it like the night before or even like two hours before the test but when it comes to midterms or finals it's very hard to cram and knowing that they have more weight compared to a quiz so it also scares me that if I don't study well um, I will not be able to do well in my finals or midterms and usually I change up my study space during midterms and finals um, instead of studying in my room I normally study the dining table which has less distractions or I study in my or sorry study in the living room or my parents room since it's mostly like black and white so it gives me more concentration and then um, normally when I study for midterms or finals, I would turn off all notifications. Like I would mute any kind of notification that comes from my iPad, laptop, or even phone so that I won't be distracted. And um, of course, like every three hours, I would take a break by um, five minutes stretch or getting some food. So yeah, so technically I just take 
five minute breaks, um, hydrate myself, switch up my study space, and have a goal in mind when studying for long hours. But I do not recommend you to study for long hours every day as that would lead to a burnout and it would cause your mental health and physical health to be quite low. So I only suggest you do it at maximum one week of studying for long and after that go for shorter amount shorter hours of study. The next question is something that I cannot live without. Um this is hard but I got to say I can't live without my books. Yeah, so it has to be between my books and my stationery. Um I can't live without my books because every time I'm bored I always think of reading books as the first thing to do to keep myself from boredom. Stationary because um well I'm a stationary enthusiast so I basically have a whole lot of stationery so I am very picky with the types of pens I have, the highlighters so I can't live without it when it comes to school when it comes to studying but when it comes to like times without studying I would choose my book so yeah so the next question is if you could live anywhere where would it be and why so I think this is more or less everyone would know but I would like to live in the UK because I really love the beauty of UK especially not just in London but also in the province provinces I don't know if you call those provinces of UK like Cornwall um I also love the rich history of UK and when I first came there two years ago on a three-day trip I just spent most of my time um going to museums or going sightseeing and also looking through the history of the UK as well as of course visiting Harry Potter and um, I also love their food and I've always dreamed of living in a cottage with a view of the sea or of meadow, meadow fields. The last question is what is the lowest grade you got and how did you tackle it? So the lowest grade I got was in both Honors Geometry and Honors Biology where I scored a 60% on both quizzes. Biology and Geometry have always been my weakest subjects and I usually have a hard time understanding the information. So let me be honest, during that time I was in my lowest point and I just wanted to like drop out from those course. But when I told my mom, she said that maybe my problem is how I study those subjects. So I made an agreement with that I will try to change my studying style for both subjects and if it does not improve then I can drop out from the honors course. So I tried changing the studying style for geometry um, by at least trying to watch math YouTubers who at least can teach the lesson well compared to my teacher and for biology I gave it more time to study and I gave it more time to understand it rather than blindly memorizing all those um, facts and information. So at the end, I was able to score an 86% on both of these. And I realized that maybe sometimes if you fail, maybe it's not what's wrong with you, but how you tackle it. So if you guys um, are failing like a subject, why don't you try to switch up your studying style and um, observe what parts of the subject are you having a hard time at and try to make sure you understand the information well. So those are all the questions that you guys have sent me and I hope you guys like this video and this is pretty um, long video because of the amount of questions I received but I do hope you guys like it and if you do please give it a like, subscribe and leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!